Welcome back everybody. So quick update on where we're at. We have the building pad pretty stinking close. Um, and it has been compacted. So now what we're gonna do, Rick's gotta go run some errands, uh, doing some different things. So I'm going to take the skid. Basically, we're gonna do a four inch pad on this project. So we now know our sand grade is close enough. We're gonna be four inches above that at top of concrete. So what I'm gonna do is take all the extra material around the outside perimeter and start moving it back away from where we're gonna pour. And we're gonna use that material. This is gonna be kind of hard to see on the camera because I can tell you it's hard to see even in person. Uh, this, this lot is just really messes with your head looking at the elevations. But basically, it doesn't look like it. We've got a big hole that we're standing in here. We're gonna take the concrete pad that's coming off of this barn here. We're gonna cut it with a demo saw, pull it out. We're gonna dig about 11 foot off of that building coming towards us. And that's gonna be a big concrete pad, but it's gonna come level. And so we're actually gonna raise this whole area out here. And then about where Rick is, maybe a little bit to his left. Let me make sure the camera's aimed where you can see him, yes. So about where Rick is right now, a little to the left, about where the edge of the sand pile is, we're gonna cut a swale from here to there so that the water from this area that we're standing in right here will all drain out that way. And that's what's really messing with my mind because right now it looks like I'm about a foot and a half below where Rick is. Uh, but he shot it with the laser and said it's not that far off. So we actually have a couple inches of fall. Well, it's more than a couple inches. I think he said we've got like four or five inches of fall going that way. So we're not looking for crazy running water. Uh, we're just wanting to get the water away from the new barn and this barn here. The other thing we're gonna do eventually is cut a little swale in here between the two buildings. And we have to do it now because we're not gonna have access to it once this thing's done. But we're gonna try to get, I'm gonna try to get most of that water to actually come to the back of the building and tie into our existing swale. We'll see how well it happens. So uh, I'm gonna jump in a machine. I'm probably gonna do some sort of time lapse for you guys. And so we'll, uh, we'll catch you here shortly. Woo boy. So we've been at it for, I don't know, we got here at like 7 30, 8 o'clock, somewhere in there, fired up. It's now just afternoon. Rick's been gone for about, I don't know, a half hour, 45 minutes. And I figured I would show you guys where we're at. But before I forget, I'm aware that the wind noise and the audio is really terrible on the GoPro. I'm aware. And just for you guys, I have ordered a new case that has a mount for a microphone so that I can actually get good audio out of this thing because it's way easier to use this to talk into than it is my big camera. And I don't have a lens big enough to really grab everything. So GoPro it is. But all that to say, I've been getting notifications that my package is like five stops away on my phone. So tomorrow, starting tomorrow with the vlog I make tomorrow, we should have better audio. So for what it's worth, bear with me on the uh, wind noise. That being said, um, like, like I said, Rick's been gone for about a half hour, 45 minutes now. So what I've been doing is I got rid of all of our piles here and have smoothed this whole thing off. And I've left our dirt about four-ish. I'm not, I'm not exact guys, but four-ish inches above our sand grade, which is gonna be level with the concrete. And so then what I've done, and you're gonna see this in the time-lapse, I'm going back and forth over this area a whole lot because as you guys saw when we were digging with the hoe earlier, I'm peeling up huge chunks of sod and it's really hard to work sod. And so I, this is totally me. My personal technique to dealing with sod is track it in really well. So just back and forth, back and forth, tracking in the sod, then actually start using your bucket and working it, back dragging it, cutting into it, back dragging it again. And the idea being, you're slowly breaking up those sod chunks so that it's individual blades of grass and roots and then it mixes in with the soil and it kind of turns back into just an organic topsoil mix. It's just a pain in the butt. There's no good way of doing it. It just takes a while to do it. So that's why in the time lapse you guys see I'm back and forth, back and forth, back and forth over this area and I'll just put you down at ground level. I mean, you can see we're still far from perfect, but it ain't big sod chunks like it was. 
So I've got this close enough. I should probably point the camera at my face, huh? Uh, I got this close enough now that I'm gonna kind of take a pause on that. I've come up here to where we're peeling out this concrete and I've actually, you'll see my marks on the ground here. I've measured just over 11 foot cause this is gonna be 11 foot pad. So I've measured just over 11 foot and I've got my markings here. I'm gonna wait until Rick comes out with the cutoff saw because this is actually tied into the existing slab. Why they poured it this way is beyond me, but yeah, there's no seam here. That is, that is one piece of concrete. So what I'm gonna do is dig down beside it, clear out this whole area all the way around. I'm gonna peel out the organics, throw them out there in the yard, try to fill in the last of that low area. And hopefully that's getting me pretty close to when Rick shows back up. Pretty close to when Rick shows back up. And I'm not sure what the plan is from there. I don't know if we're, we're talking about starting the swale today. He may wanna do that tomorrow instead which Rick's not gonna be here tomorrow. He's gonna be on another job, so I'm working with another one of his buddies. That should be interesting. So, yeah. So let me get you guys set up. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get you guys set up in the cab, and I'm also going to throw my action cam in there to give you some more shots of me operating where you can see my hands on the sticks, because instead of working with a thumb, now we're doing some fine grading stuff, so I'll let you guys see my hands while I'm doing that. And uh, yeah, give me just a minute, I'll get you set up. Catch you in a minute. tip when running an excavator and I'm gonna do an official tips and tricks video like I did for dozers I just haven't had a chance to yet uh, one of the things I always tell people is try and write your name with a pencil holding it in your hand like not like you grasp a pencil with your fingers but hold it put your big old fat mitt around that pencil and try to write your name and then write your name using it like you normally would with your fingers and tell me which one's better. And I guarantee you, the one where you wrote with your fingers is better. And the reason is, is you have a lot more fine motor skills in your fingertips than you do in your wrists and your arms. The same thing applies to operating, uh, dozers, skids, but especially excavators. So many people, especially right off the bat, just want to freaking grip these handles and they white knuckles because they're grasping so hard. And what happens is now your arm is doing all of your fine movements and that's just, your arms aren't built for fine movements. And so what I like to do is actually use my fingers. Sometimes I don't really pay attention, so sometimes I do grip them. But most of the time I'm towards the tips of the controls and I'm using my fingertips. I'll grab it with my palm but I'm primarily using my fingers to do all of my fine movements. That way, if I have to get right up next to this building, I'm not trying to use my arm and go really slow and delicate. No, it's all in the fingers, and you can be a lot more precise because you've got that feel. So like I said, one of these days, I'm going to do an official excavator tips and tricks video, but that's a little freebie for you. Oh, I almost got it. I have no idea what this thing is even for, but it's really in my way and cramping my style. And again, all we're gonna do here is just get the organic material out and I'm gonna over dig it by about a foot like we did for the, what am I trying to say, for the pole barn pad.
topsoil there. I'm going to need to scoot in a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is a little side shuffle. Pick myself up, do a jump turn. Now we're going to do the same thing on the back side. And now we're about a foot closer than we were. So that's a nice little trick too if you just need to bump over perpendicular to what your tracks are set up as. That works really well. Man, that's good topsoil and he's got a lot of it here. We're gonna go with that for now, just because uh, that's already freaking deep, and it could be we've got a clay around here that's real similar to the color of topsoil. And from the cab here, I'm still thinking that's topsoil though. So never mind what I was gonna say. But before I dig this sucker two and a half feet down. I'm just going to leave it at this for now and we'll see what Rick wants to do when he gets back. Because I don't know that he's going to want to use that much of this sand. But we got a lot of it left over so maybe he does, we'll see. When in doubt, ask questions, don't make assumptions. That is one thing in this industry, you know, it's one thing when you're working with a buddy like Rick. I'm not worried that Rick's going to come chew my ass for using too much sand or digging too deep but when you are on a typical job site your foreman will fly off the handle at you if you make assumptions and just start going to town in an area that you shouldn't be so always 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 ask questions Okay, it does look like that is that clay. So you can just barely see it up against the machine here. Let me tap my screen here and see if I can, yeah, in the shade you're not going to be able to see the color difference. But up towards the machine, that is that clay. So I am going to go ahead and bump over here. I think we're deep enough. <clears throat> and so notice here, like I was talking about earlier, I started on my edge. Now that the edge is dug, we're going to bump over and uh and start digging the main part of it now that we've got a clean line sorry if i hesitate it's because i'm looking at my camera screen to make sure you guys can see my hands and see what i'm pointing at and referencing so these are the struggles of having a, a vlog you know people just don't think about it they think it's just all fun and games and easy and it's just not the case So there is a reason I'm sticking in. I know in my in one of my other vlogs from last week, I talked about when you want to operate quick, not to do multiple movements while you're spinning the machine. The reason I'm sticking in here is because I'm up close enough to this building that I would rather not have my stick hanging way out there where I can accidentally smack into something. And I am within reach of the building. It would be full full extent, extended reach to get there, but I, uh, I am pretty conservative when I operate and I don't like to take chances that I might have to later pay for, so I'm gonna stick in. I'm not worried about going super fast here. Anytime you're digging in close to a building like this, the other thing I was gonna say, is when you get in tight to the machine, the top of your stick moves away from the machine. So I don't know if, let me check and see if you guys can see that you can't. Let me get the boom down a little bit further. So if you notice, right up there, past the hinge point on the stick, as I bring my bucket, oh, let me curl my bucket so I'm not tearing my grade up here. So if you notice the top of the stick up there, as I stick in, the stick cylinder is pushing the top of that stick out. And what you want to be careful of is it's real easy to go, you know, from this position right here, 
go, oh yeah, I got plenty of room, I'm not gonna hit anything. And then you start digging tight up against the machine and you notice as that boom goes down and the stick comes in, it sticks out further that way quite a bit more. And so you can absolutely hit a building thinking you are totally safe and in the clear. So that's one thing you always wanna pay attention to when you're digging like I am right tight up against the machine. Just make sure you got plenty of room for that stick for the top of it so that you don't smack into something. I had a, I've had a few close calls in my day. Luckily I have not hit anything, but I have had some close calls. Well, gang, we've got the yard relatively smooth. I mean, again, it's not perfect because there's a lot of crap in there, grass and everything, but it'll work. So now what we're trying to figure out is this, this swale, this supposed swale that I'm supposed to put in here. Rick claims that there is some fall from where we're at here at the barn over to the driveway, way back over there by the hoe. I don't believe him. He says he shot it with the laser. I have my doubts because I'm eyeballing this going, mm, I don't think so. So I figured I would show you guys what I'm doing here. So I've got the laser set up on my grader out here. I shot, let me show you guys. I've shot the concrete and we're high because what I did is, oh Lord, I can't even talk. Let me concentrate. So what I did is I shot the top of concrete here and then what we're wanting to do is have an inch of fall on our pad. So I actually took the laser eye, moved it up the stick one inch, inch and a half, I kind of estimated. So that will give us our grade 10, 11 feet out from the building where we need to be. So that is what this eye is currently set to. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out here and test the dirt. So that is half a tenth, three quarters of a tenth high. So that's gonna get cut down a little bit, but we're pretty dang close. So now what we need to do is we need to actually go over here to the driveway and see if we have fall. But I'm gonna check a couple spots out here cause we've got like a foot and a half, man. I bet we've got at least a foot cut out here in the middle. Yeah, see how far I'm having to lean that over? Maybe it's not quite a foot, but it ain't gonna be a little cut. Let's walk over here to the drive. Oh, he always puts me in these situations where I've just gotta think. And I told him I'm out here to pull sticks for you, man. I'm not. I'm not supposed to have to think. This requires too much effort. So here is where. Hmm. Sorry if I'm chewing a little bit. I just wrapped up a little bit of lunch. This is where I'm thinking we should go. And see, that's my problem. See how that's beeping? And see how I'm only like two inches off the ground? So what does that tell me? If for those of you not familiar with grade rods, that tells me, let me put this down so I can really, really point and visualize it for you. What that just told me is that, let's get over here where you can see. Over the course of this giant long run, starting way back over here, I'm supposed to make a swale that's gonna come right there where we measured. And across that entire distance, it falls about two to three inches. In other words, it doesn't fall at all. So water's not really gonna run. I get what, <coughs> excuse me, pardon me. I get what Rick's trying to do. The The main thing that he's worried about is in order to be to code uh, within the first 10 feet, I think it is, you're supposed to have six inches of fall from the house or from whatever structure you're building, which in all honesty, I think we've got most places, but then he's not wanting all that water to just pool in the middle of the yard here. So he's wanting to create like a swale area where it can kind of flow. At the end of the day, it's gonna be a big pain because we're peeling up, you know, for most of this, we're gonna be peeling up just the sod and you've already seen how frustrating it is to work that. We're gonna have a giant 
you know spot here in the middle where we're cutting maybe closer to a foot because there's a ridge that runs through here and then we're gonna have to figure out where to lose that material and blend the rest of the yard and at the end of the day it's not like this thing's ever gonna have running water through it because you've only got two inches of fall from here to there like that's gonna be real we're talking I don't know 250 feet or so 200 feet that's ridiculously difficult to maintain without some sort of GPS grade system on the machine. So just eyeballing it and trying to get it close, I mean, this is gonna be a pain of a, it's gonna be a pain in the ass trying to make this swale. So we'll do it, I'll, just as long as Rick's happy, I'll do it for him. But this is the sort of stuff he sticks me with and then he's like, all right, I gotta go run a couple errands. Every time, every time, Rick. Rick, if you're watching this, I'm on to you, buddy. All right, guys, let me switch out my GoPro battery. I'll throw you guys in the hole because that's what we're going to use. I'm going to start. My strategy is I'm going to take the hoe and I'm just going to cut one bucket width and try to get our, our actual trench. And then what I'll do, this is where, you know, some technique with a, with a uh, excavator with a blade comes in. If you can get your track down in the ditch you just created and just lower your blade, then your blade will create a nice slope down into the bottom of that ditch. So that's going to be my strategy is I'm going to dig this thing just one bucket width wide with the hoe and then we'll get our track in there and we'll actually use the blade to cut the slope going into the ditch and then we'll shape it up uh, either with the hoe or the skid. So, so anyway, let me get that all set up and I'll catch you guys here in a couple minutes. Cutting I do here gets me just about level to where I'm going to be once I get to the street. I guess I'm going to throw this out here to just blend it. But yeah, this ain't going to be a good time making this thing. Grade check. Whoa. 
what I've got so far. Unfortunately, I've set this up to where I'm right in the way of the laser. This is just all the way around gonna be a good time. Well, let me pull off to the side here. I'll spin where hopefully you guys can see at least part of my grade checking. I'll be back. suspected I'm too low so I can fill that with my blade when I go and cut this in cut the actual swale okay guys so I'm just now starting to shape the swale so literally I just set my track down into the trench that we've made and I'm starting to lower my blade down and so the machine is naturally going to tip and pitch from our existing grade down to our ditch grade. So we're gonna kind of go along. This is a kind of slow process because as material builds up, you have to pull it back out of the trench. The reason I'm pushing this direction is because we're gonna use all the material back over in that low spot. So it makes no sense to push it all this way just to carry it all back that way. So let's go at it and see what we can do. Excuse me. And I'm not gonna try to peel this whole thing at once. I'm just gonna try to work it in layers. to let's let's say we wanted to take the slope and knock it down a little bit and carry it you know twice the length then what I would do is I would set my machine to straddle this section and that way it's going to knock the ridge out of the middle here and it's going to just make that whole slope a little gentler so you know as with anything when you use the blade on an excavator it's not gonna be perfect but you can you know rough it in really quick and then jump in the skid and do all of your fine tuning, your back blading and everything. But you can already see, we've got a swale here. I'll get on the other side and do the exact same thing. We're just gonna shave it the other way. And then we'll just have a nice swale that's gonna be, you know, 10 to 15 feet going down into it on each side. So it's gonna be a gentle swale. The homeowner can still mow on it and everything. So that's my technique for making swales if I've got an excavator with a blade uh, or something that I can kind of get in there with. It also works, you could do it with a skid too. So what I would do is dig that same trench and just jump in the skid instead of using the Mini uh, or the, X, the CX-80. But this CX-80 weighs more than that skid does and it's got more traction, so that's why I'm using this to rough it in. So we'll keep at it, keep at it here. here for 
the final video of the day. So uh, I'm wrapping up a little early. My kids are gonna come right around in the machine with me since we got a, a surprise last job for the season. So, uh, so I am gonna work for another, I don't know, half hour or so, but I'm not gonna record any of it because I'm gonna have kids in the cab with me. Mm, gotta love the itch on the lip. Uh, so let me show you what we've done. So first of all, biggest thing today was the pad is completely level. Um, we'll touch that up a hair, but I mean, it's pretty much there. We got this dug down. Tomorrow we're gonna cut that slab and we'll fill the rest with sand and we'll actually knock all this sand down and get it compacted to the right level. Uh, and then you can see this area back here. I have been busy making that swale and we are generating a lot of dirt and we got a lot more to come out of here. You can see my piles back up over the ridge there. That's where we're gonna try to lose it all is back in that area. So tonight I'm gonna try to dress this swale up just a little more. It's not gonna be pretty and perfect. It is what it is. Um, we're not supposed to get rain tonight and we're coming out first thing in the morning. So, uh, you know, normally I like to leave the jobs a little nicer than this, but we're not gonna get any rain. So I'll dress this up, back blade it just a little bit to spruce it up. That's about where we're gonna end for the night. So thanks for following along. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys tomorrow when we saw some concrete. We'll see you guys later.